When we started to gather information about Uruguay, we didn't think that we would find such a good country. Of course, it is not a rich and developed country, but it is one of the best countries in its region and in its class. It is a liberal, egalitarian, libertarian, and just country. There are definitely bad aspects. There will be people who will not like it even if they go there. But it is definitely a country that is worth getting to know closely and will surprise you as you get to know it. It's not called the Switzerland of South America without a reason. Let's get to know Uruguay and see some of its interesting features in this video from videos about countries. Before starting the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you are not already a subscriber, and don't forget to press the like button if you liked the video. The country, officially known as the Republica Oriental del Uruguay, the Eastern Republic of Uruguay, is located in southeastern South America. It borders Argentina and Brazil and has a coastline on the South Atlantic Ocean. It has 176,000 square kilometers of land. After Suriname, it is the smallest country in South America. It has about 3.5 million inhabitants, of which about 1,400,000 live in the capital Montevideo. The official language is Spanish. Europeans settled in the country after the geographical discoveries, and very few indigenous people have remained since then. Today's Uruguayans trace their roots to Spain and Italy. The country's name originates from the Uruguay River. Born in Brazil, the river passes through Argentina and flows into the sea in Uruguay. Since it is located in the east in relation to this river, its official name is the Eastern Republic of Uruguay. The name Uruguay also means the river of painted birds in the local language. Like all countries in the Americas, Uruguay, which was a colony of Europeans for many years after the geographical discoveries, gained its independence in 1825. After gaining independence, they experienced a period of political strife and civil war. They achieved political stability in the first half of the 1900s and remained neutral in World War II. Although they remained neutral, they could not escape the economic effects of the war. Due to the low level of welfare and economic difficulties, the radical leftist armed organization called Tupamaros aimed to overthrow the government. In 1968, President Jorge Pacheco declared a state of emergency. In 1972, the Constitution and all civil rights were suspended. On June 27, 1973, a military regime began with a civilian-backed coup. The military regime lasted for 12 years until 1985. In 1985, they returned to a democratic regime. After the return to democracy, they implemented many reforms in the field of economy and democracy. In the 2000s, they began to reap the fruits of their reforms and experienced very serious economic developments. Despite being in the middle of two different cultures, Brazil and Argentina, they have almost completely interacted culturally with Argentina and are very similar to each other. The main reason for this is that in Brazil, the native language is Portuguese, while in Argentina, they speak the same native language, Spanish. Both countries speak Spanish with the same accent. If an Argentinian and a Uruguayan speak Spanish without saying which country they are from, even they won't be able to tell who belongs to which country. Uruguay has the lowest income inequality and poverty rate in South America. In this economically stable country, 60% of the population belongs to the middle class. It consistently ranks at the top of human development indices in its region. They are consistently among the top 15 countries in the world's democracy indexes. It is the least corrupt and most democratic country in Latin America. According to the United Nations, it is one of the two countries in South America with the highest personal income rate, along with Chile. The most important source of income is the financial sector. Agriculture and tourism follow. They serve as the international financial center of the South American region. Tax rates are extremely low. Because of their advanced banking system and their status as tax havens, they are sometimes accused of facilitating the flow of black money in Argentina and providing opportunities for Argentines to evade taxes. In fact, the situation is a bit like this. Argentina is one of the most politically and economically unstable and turbulent countries in the world. Uruguay, small and stable, has been a safe haven for the rich from neighboring Argentina since the 2000s, much like Switzerland's role in Europe. The fact that they speak the same language and share the same culture has contributed to this situation. On the other hand, some wealthy Brazilians also work extensively with Uruguayan banks. In general, it is an expensive country, very expensive compared to other South American countries. The average salary in the country is about $680 per month. In terms of purchasing power in the capital, Montevideo, people can buy about 66 kilos of red meat with one month's average salary. If we look at the Big Mac index, people in Uruguay can buy 125 Big Mac menus with one month's average salary. 
If we look at the minimum wage, the monthly minimum wage in Uruguay is $485. Of course, there are poor people living in poor conditions, but their population is small and getting smaller by the day. About 8% of people in the country live below the poverty line. In 2006, the rate was 32.5%. Like all countries, they are struggling with a post-pandemic economy and rising inflation. After the pandemic, many young people migrated to the United States in search of better opportunities. Between 2010 and 2015, Jose Mujica served as president of Uruguay, making history as the world's poorest leader. In many countries today, politicians are often associated with corruption. Especially in underdeveloped countries, state officials or senior bureaucrats have incredible fortunes after taking office. But Jose Mujica is a different example from others. Jose Mujica was a former guerrilla who spent 12 years in prison in the 1970s and 1980s. He escaped with 103 prisoners. He served as Minister of Livestock, Agriculture and Fisheries in the Broad Front Coalition of Left-Wing Parties from 2005 to 2008, and later as a senator in the government. In 2009, he won the presidential election as the candidate of the Broad Front Coalition. With the change of political system, he served as head of state between 2010 and 2015. Jose Mujica, who regularly declares his assets, owns two cars, a small apartment and a modest farmhouse. For years, he has donated 90% of his salary to charity. One of his two cars, a 1973 Volkswagen Beetle, attracted the world's attention during his presidency. An Arab sheikh said he was willing to pay $1 million to buy the car. Jose Mujica says it was his choice for his modest lifestyle. Mujica, who grew up in a poor peasant family, said in an interview with the BBC, I have lived like this for many years of my life. The rest of my salary is enough for me. People who choose an expensive life are in danger of poverty. I am not poor, he said. Today, some countries are known for liberalizing recreational substances. The Netherlands is the first country that comes to mind. The main strategy of countries that legalize the use of recreational substances is to keep their citizens away from synthetic and chemical substances. In this context, Uruguay has also legalized the use of cannabis. In fact, in 2017, Uruguay became the first country to legalize the cultivation, distribution and sale of cannabis in a chain. In the Netherlands, for example, the sale of cannabis is legal in certain places and under certain conditions, but its cultivation and distribution are not fully legalized. Under Uruguayan law, cannabis is sold in pharmacies in packages of 5 and 10 grams. Those who want to buy it register in the system and give their fingerprints. Everyone has the right to buy 10 grams per person per week. The system is strictly monitored by the security forces. Uruguay became the first country in the world to distribute free laptops to all students. By the mid-2000s, computers had become a central part of life. Uruguay's then-president, Tabara Vazquez, believed that laptops could play an important role in closing the gap in education quality between rural and developed regions of the country. With this in mind, the Siebel project was developed. This project was based on providing a laptop to every student. In 2007, over 300,000 students received laptops. Free internet service was also provided to all public schools. The Sibal project has been extremely successful. The quality of basic education in Uruguay improved rapidly. The project has been recognized by many international organizations. Like other South American countries, Uruguayans love soccer too much. Although they are a small and underpopulated country, they have produced and continue to produce many star soccer players. In 1930, they hosted the first World Cup in history. They won the World Cup in that organization as well as in 1950. Before 1930, they won gold medals in soccer at the last two Olympic Games in 1924 and 1928. For this reason, their national team crest has four stars. According to the rules, one star is added to the national team crest for each World Cup title, but the only exception is Uruguay. Uruguay counted the 1924 and 1928 Olympics as World Cup championships and added their stars to their crest. They are still in dispute with FIFA over this issue. It is the most gay-friendly country in Latin America. It is one of the 17 countries not only in Latin America, but in the world where there is no official heterosexist discrimination. It is one of the most progressive states in terms of gay rights. In 1934, they decriminalized homosexual relations, and since then, homosexuals are equal before the law. In 2004, they outlawed discrimination against homosexuals. In 2009, they allowed same-sex couples to adopt children. In 2013, they legalized same-sex marriage. And today, Uruguayan homosexuals can serve in the army if they wish. They have the longest national anthem. 
For those who know, don't criticize right away, we will explain. In fact, the longest national anthem in the world belongs to Greece. The Greek national anthem has 158 verses, but the Greeks preferred to use a shorter version for musical use. The national anthem of Uruguay is the longest national anthem musically. It takes about six minutes to sing. Of course, they also shortened their anthem for international organizations. For example, the version sung before national team matches is less than two minutes long. South American countries are generally known for their religiosity, but Uruguay is the most secular of them all. There is no official religion in the country. Its constitution guarantees freedom of religion and prohibits the Uruguayan state from specifically promoting any religion. Individuals and organizations that practice religious discrimination are punished. Religious instruction is prohibited in public schools. Schools are closed on Christian holidays, but these holidays are not called by Christian names. For example, Easter is called Tourism Week and Christmas is called Family Day. Students of other religions can also skip school on their religious holidays if they wish. Today, 48% of people in Uruguay do not believe in any religion. 37.2% are Catholics and 9.9% are Protestants. There are very few Jews and Armenians. The Muslim population is about 1,500 people. In the last 15 years, they have undergone one of the most environmentally friendly transformations in the world. 99.9% .9 of households in the country have access to electricity, and in 15 years they have eliminated fossil fuels and electricity generation. In 2015, 95% of the country's electricity came from renewable sources. By 2020, they have increased this to 100%. They achieved this transformation with very little government support. Thanks to the determination of the private sector and environmentalism, Uruguay now emits less carbon dioxide. They are also less dependent on oil, which 15 years ago was the country's main import and consumed most of the budget thanks to renewable resources. Salt shakers are banned in restaurants and school cafeterias in Uruguay. Uruguayans are a salt-loving nation, consuming on average about twice the amount of salt recommended by the World Health Organization. This leads to widespread obesity and heart and blood pressure problems. To combat this, they passed a law in 2015. They banned salt shakers in school cafeterias and restaurants. In this country, if you need salt in a restaurant, you have to ask the waiters for it. The same goes for ketchup and mayonnaise. The same law also requires restaurants to post warnings about salt consumption on their menus and to offer low-sodium alternatives to their customers. The Uruguayan government has recently started to give a lot of importance to tourism. They also support this importance with direct incentives for foreign tourists. For example, for a while they distributed up to 25 liters of free gasoline to tourists arriving by car from other countries. They refunded up to 20% to tourists who spent with credit cards registered in foreign banks. The beaches in the part of the country facing the ocean are very impressive. The city of Punta del Este stands out as a vacation destination. Known as the Monaco of South America, the city is frequented by the Latin and North American jet set. If you know any interesting facts about Uruguay, please write them in the comments.